Welcome to our lecture online and here's our third video on simple harmonic motion dealing with the general equation, the differential equation. And just to remind us, here's our general differential equation where k is the spring constant, m is the mass, x is the position away from the equilibrium point, x double dot simply means the second derivative of x with respect to time which is the acceleration of the object. Of course, replacing k over m by omega squared, and notice I used omega sub naught squared because we're going to use omega sub naught as the frequency, the radial frequency of the system without damping, and then omega prime will be the one with damping, so we'll see that later. So omega sub naught simply means the angular frequency of the oscillation when there's no damping involved, and it's equal to the square root of k over m, k being the spring constant, m being the mass, and that makes a lot of sense because when k being the spring constant gets larger, there's a larger force to restore the position uh, back to equilibrium for the mass. So if the mass is pulled away from the equilibrium point, if k is large, the string is strong, it'll try to move it quickly back to the equilibrium point. So therefore, omega, the oscillatory frequency, will be greater. If m is bigger in the denominator, that makes omega smaller. If you have a bigger mass, it's harder for the spring to get it back to the equilibrium. Therefore, the oscillatory frequency will, will be slower. So f being the frequency in terms of cycles per second is omega divided by 2 pi. This was our general solution to the equation. Now let's think about this for a moment. So here we have an object that's oscillating back and forth. Let's say that's in this position at time equals zero. So let me write that at time equals zero, at time equals zero, it is in this position. Now, that means it could be doing two things. It could either be stationary, if it's momentarily stationary, that means it's reached its highest point before it starts coming back down, and so at that point the velocity would be zero. Or, at this moment, the velocity could still be positive, meaning it's still moving upward to a higher location because its maximum amplitude is greater than what it currently is at. Notice the position it's at right now is x up not above the equilibrium point. And the third possibility would be that it's at that location, but it's already moving downward. It was higher before, and now it's moving downward. So t equals zero, it's on a downward trend already. So what would that look like if we were to graph it? Well, let's start with the simple case where velocity would be zero, which means at that moment, x of naught would be the amplitude of the motion. So at that point, this then would become the amplitude, and since it's a cosine function, it would look something like this. There we go. And so in this case, this would be a, the amplitude of oscillatory motion, and at the bottom over here, this would be uh, minus a, so it would be the amplitude would be between plus a, minus a, plus a, minus a, is moving back and forth and back and forth, that would be the highest point it would be at. Now let's say, for example, that at time equals zero, it is at that location, but it's still moving upward, meaning it hasn't reached its highest point yet. What that means is that the function would look more like this. And then would come down, and then go further down this way, and come back up and go further up this way. And so you can also see that there's a phase shift involved. So there's a certain amount of shift, phi, to the right in this case. So therefore, that's where the minus phi comes from. Remember, a minus sign means it's shifted to the right. And so in this case, we would have a minus phi, a certain distance to the right, uh, from, the, um, from the initial point right here before we reach its maximum, maximum there. And notice in this case, the amplitude would be greater would be a right here and of course here the negative amplitude would be right here notice that in this case you would have a greater amplitude the frequency would not be different the frequency would be the same because you have the same k and the same m you just would have a different initial condition when the object would be moving upward at that particular time what if the object is moving downward at that moment? Well, that means it must have been at a higher location before time equals zero. So it must have been coming from some location up here, and now it's on its way down. So that would be the third case right here, and then it would simply continue down. I don't have to do a, a dashed line, so I continue down, back up like this, and go back up like this, this and then back down like that. And notice in this case, there's been a shift to the left, like that, and so in that case we'd get a plus phi, because it shifted to the left, to the left means plus. Notice its amplitude would also be greater, 
it doesn't have to be the same as the amplitude of the red line. It could be larger, it could be smaller. We don't know, there's, but there's some initial condition, meaning that at time equals zero, it's already past its highest point. It's already on its way down. And so that would be a graph representing its motion at that point. Notice in all three cases, the omega, the frequency is exactly the same. It's just the starting point is different. And for the ease of drawing, the amplitude in each case was different as well. So there's a graphical representation of the general solution of simple harmonic motion with no damping factor involved. You'll again also see in the next so many videos how that graph will change when we put the damping factor in there as well. So now you've seen the general approach of how we look at simple harmonic motion with no damping. You then saw how the general solution was developed and then in this video you can see how the graphical representation shows how the simple harmonic motion happens. Notice as this thing goes up and down, as it goes past the equilibrium point, you go past this line right here on the way down, you can see that the position is constantly changing as time goes by. And the initial position right here simply, the, simply shows you what the object is doing at time equals zero. Is it standing still, meaning is it its maximum amplitude? Is it still moving upward or is it already moving downward? And that's what that graph represents.